<laughs> sweep me off my feet and just want to take me to somewhere nice. <sighs> well, at least that was kind of my life before I started traveling a lot and then I had to deal with all of these travel things such as you can't have big items such as this big thing, the toothpaste because they think you're trying to blow up the, like the airport. <laughs> you can't have a huge bag, like a huge bag that I would want because, you know, there's not enough space in the airplane, they say. <laughs> so I had to deal with all of these things and it's difficult, but I managed to do that because I travel a lot and I just have so much stuff that I have to try to squeeze into one bag all neatly. So I've been traveling a lot. I've been to over 10 countries and I just randomly traveled to the U.S. like in April. I'm going to like three different cities. So traveling and packing is very important and it's key that I do it the right way. So regardless of whether you travel by airplane, car, if you're staying home, if you just need to take one bag for one night to go to your Aunt Priscilla's house in Kentucky, then I'm gonna share with you some tips that have helped me. I call these my pack rat hacks, and I'm gonna big tongue twister. So I'm gonna share three things with you. What not to pack, okay? And I've learned this the hard way, what not to pack. Next thing, what to pack. Because you, you probably think you should pack it, but maybe you shouldn't, so I'm going to help clear that up. And the last thing is how to pack, because I promise you, you're probably not doing it right. Okay. So why should you care about this? Why should you even sit here and listen to Jessica throw off a bunch of random facts about packing? It will reduce your stress. So let's say you and your friend are like, hey, Tyler, let's just go you know, hiking this weekend. And you're like, oh crap, I have to pack. But if you know Jessica's packing tips, you won't be so stressed out. And you carrying less stuff, your, so your back will break when you're older. And you have more space in your luggage so you can carry more souvenirs back and you can like brag about all your wonderful travels and all that. And lastly, you're organized and me loving to be organized, that helps me. So that's why you should care about these things. You don't wanna be like these people. The people that have to like sit on their luggage and make it go down because they're not gonna make it to the airport because they don't play at the airport. So that's how I'm going to help you today. Let's first talk about what not to pack. So raise your hand if you've ever lived in, uh, excuse me, raise your hand if you've ever been to a hotel. Yes, keep your hands up, good. So the majority of people, so pretty much everyone in here should listen to this. When you go to the hotel, what do you see in the bathroom? Towel. Towel. Towels. <laughs> what else? Soap. Shampoo. Shampoo. Mm. Toilet paper. Toilet paper. Toilet. Conditioner. Holes. Oh, okay. Anything else? This may be a lady thing. Yes, how did you know? <laughs> and I'll put other, we'll put that there. <laughs> Recognize that other thing that we have to have. So what does that mean? That means that when you go traveling and you know you're staying in a hotel, you should only pack things that won't be available to you. So therefore you should pack, don't pack things that are made available to you. So 
case in point. When I went to a hotel two weeks ago, they already had body lotion and conditioner and they have shampoo and pretty much all of those things you have listed here. So for example, I want you to smell this. Just smell it, put your hand right there, give us a sample. <laughs> Rub it in your hands. <laughs> Become one with the lotion. Oh, yeah, mm. thank you. Is it, is, it, is it kind of good lotion? It feels like regular lotion. It feels like regular Would you use it? Sure. She would, she would use it. So my point <laughs> is that I pretty much forced her to think about, don't pack it because they have pretty much the same stuff you would use anyway, and it just saves you space. For example, this bag, this is my toiletries bag. I really don't even have to bring this if I go stay in a hotel. So that saves a bunch of space in this bag. All right, now that we know what not to pack, this is just another picture of some things in the hotel. Obviously, you don't have to bring a trash can. Like, that's something that you wouldn't have to bring. Okay, let's talk about what to pack. What to pack. Toiletries, for example. So let's say you're not staying in a hotel. Let's say you have to go on the annoying airplane that's like, you have to keep everything under three ounces and da 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 da. That's where this bag comes into play. I literally have a toiletries bag of things that are like less than three fluid ounces. That way, if I ever randomly needed to go to the airport in like 24 hours between now, I could just say, you know what, here, this is everything I need for life. I'm ready to go. Just, just that simple. It, it's gonna be easy, because like I said, in April, I'm literally gonna go to like Orlando and then Albuquerque and then like to DC in like two weeks. So it's important that I have everything together. So you should always have small size stuff ready and just carry it with you and just have it kind of in a bag just so your life is easier. Now my last point is how to pack. Because I promise you guys, you may not be doing it as good as you could be. So take, for example, this shirt. I'm gonna show you how I rolled this shirt so that you can pack more efficiently. So, this is a rolled shirt, this is unrolled. First step, make a big mouth at the bottom, okay? Fold it in, in this way, roll it up really, really tight, and close it. It will not get wrinkled, and you can easily put in that bag. If you do that for a bunch of things, that's what it'll look like. Mm -hmm. Organize, put, a, put all the days together, and you're good. So, to conclude, we're not gonna talk about ear. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you learned something from packing, and please take this with you. You don't wanna be a pack rat, pack rat like I am. Thank you. <laughs> You can leave that table up there. Hi. Thank you. Oh. Oh. Thank you. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the education you were just given. Please just write all your comments and put it into the middle, and we will collect them. It's going to be there for everything. It is. Although they want sales like 75% or something. So I don't know how much it costs now. Or it's not available anymore. I want to keep it because I don't know if it does or if it does or if it does. I think Chelsea is doing it. Everyone's trying to get that now. I see it. Like last year, after the beginning of the fall semester, no one had Chelsea.
Toastmasters, that was mile 15 out of the 26.2 mile Disney Marathon in January 2016. 10 miles after this video you just saw, I could see the finish line. Stationary, but I could see it. It was 100 yards away. And I say 100 yards because three or four months before that, I was at Sanford Stadium, and I know what 100 yards looked like because mm -hmm. I was watching the football team and eating food that I shouldn't have been eating. I should have been training, but instead I was eating food. Food like hamburgers, hot dogs. I was going to the store and buying cookies instead of cucumbers. And at that point in time, 100 yards away, it was affecting me tremendously. I was running. Epcot. You know the big golf ball looking thing? I was just turning the corner in Epcot, the last 100 yards. We had princess fairies to my left and right, looking happier than I looked at the time. Sweat dripping down. I don't know if anybody's ever ran for long periods of time. You get sweat, salt accumulated on your face like icing on a cake. <laughs> Running. 50 yards away from the finish line. It's getting closer, but it's still in the distance. I'm approaching a, a bridge that crosses a lake to my left and in front of me. And if I remember correctly, this is where Goofy and Minnie were on my right. I could see them, but I wasn't turning my head because I was so extremely tired after 26 miles, 50 yards to the finish line, going over the bridge. And one thing came to mind, it started ringing. You know that annoying voice you just heard in the video? It's my mom, <laughs> and her voice started ringing. When I was registering for this race, she told me, she asked me, Alex, are you sure you have enough time to train? Do you go to school full time, and do you think you have enough time? I replied, is my name Alexander Matthews? It wasn't really the answer to a question, <laughs> but that's honestly what I said, and it just kept running over and over in my mind, 50 yards. 25 yards away, I just got off the bridge. Finish line banner was approaching, but still stationary. My feet felt like rocks. I could feel with every step the nerves, the electric nerves coming to my brain, sending pain, waves of pain. I was utterly destroyed emotionally, physically. I just couldn't hold it back any longer. 10 yards away from the finish line. It was no longer a stationary target. That goal, that finish line banner, I was charging it, it was charging me. I was so close, I could taste it. Running, running, running. I remember I had a gimp. After 26 miles, you just get a gimp, okay? Oh, salt accumulated. The emotion of holding back 26 miles of Physical stress just flooded my gates, my gates of my body. And I remember crossing the finish line like this. To my left and right, gates of people, crowds, yelling at their loved ones. Yard zero. I 
finally, I finally made it. Now you can't see this picture very clear, but this is Alex Matthews, not at his happiest moment. I'm crying, like tears. So although I had physical and mental pain, I was pretty hydrated. <laughs> it might not be an image you would think about crossing a finish line after a race. You think, oh yes, <laughs> everyone come give me water. <laughs> this guy was destroyed. I immediately crossed the finish line, saw my mom, and she was so happy for me, and I just broke down. I trained for this race, but I was unprepared. And that's the message I want to send to you today. Yeah, Alex, but you crossed the finish line. You, you achieved your goal. Yeah, I achieved my goal, but I was still unprepared. The last 100 yards, the home stretch, I paid the price of being unprepared for this race. And I wanted to share this message with you today so that you don't have to be. I was eating unhealthy. I was doing things I shouldn't, and I paid the price. This last 100 yards. It's easy to relate it to tests for us Toastmasters at the University of Georgia. You might start studying the day before or two days before. That's unprepared because that home stretch the night before, when you're cramming and feeling stressed and you want to pull your hair out, that's what's happening. What happened here, that's the same thing. It's unpreparedness and you're feeling the effects. And when you do accomplish that goal and pass that test, maybe 70, 80, do you really feel satisfied? No. You always feel like you can do a little bit better. So my home stretch that I shared with you today, my last 100 yards, don't make that same mistake. Prepare adequately. Now, after this picture you just saw, I was looking around for my family. I had to keep on walking. And I came to a crawl, and then I came to a place where I just couldn't walk anymore. My legs wouldn't work. I literally had to find someone to get me a wheelchair. They sat me down, and they wheeled me off. Don't make the same mistake I made. Thank you, Toastmasters. <laughs>